Hey, hey, it's DDA and welcome back to the Synced. Uh, today I have a guide for you in which I'm going to show you how you can actually transform a modular base like I have over here into one single factory with a main bus in there and a completely automated mall that will produce everything you need, including components, uh, base materials, whatever. Basically, all the production is taking place in one big factory that is completely automated and almost completely automated in such a way that it doesn't need robots anymore. Uh, no driving around, no getting stuck, no accidentally pointing it in the wrong direction and messing your logistics up. Nope, it's going to be completely automated. So if that sounds good to you, then make sure you watch the rest of this video. What you're going to need is actually only two relatively early mid-game technologies. You're going to need the advanced materials, mainly because this, uh, no sorry, this one, this building specifically is very, very handy, as you will see in a moment. And the second thing you're going to need is the drone storage. You need the drone ports as well as drone packages. Now, of course, you don't need, just need to have this unlocked. You actually need to be able to build some of these in order to get started. So make sure you don't mess anything up in your base before you actually have these. Now, in order to make our lives a little easier, we're going to actually make a couple of behaviors. This first one is going to be extremely simple. We're just going to ask it to request an item. We're going to request a drone. So we're going to request exactly two drones in this behavior. And, and that is all that is to it. Now, the second behavior is actually going to be extremely simple as well. It's very similar, but the only thing you're going to do is add a couple of more of these requests. You're going to add an equal number of parameters i call them bus items you know where this is going and you're going to link each of these items to one of the requestings and that is it and then in order to actually build our bus we're going to need a little blueprint to make our lives easier this is the building that i was just showing you and you're going to need two of these drone ports in here you're going to need the medium storage well you don't necessarily need it but it adds a lot of storage space so that's going to be really convenient uh, you're going to need one of the behavior controllers and you're going to preload it with the drone request that we just programmed. Uh, right click on this and you can set it already. And then you have one uh, internal slot left over. You can use that for whatever you want, but I'm using it for even more storage space. Then take your blueprint and let's start building. I recommend leaving two spaces between every part of your bus. Um, the drones will easily be able to cover that. That actually allows this building to reach out to the one that's after the next building. So. Um, that just spreads it out really nice and don't overdo it just start with a small part of your bus at first start the behavior in your building if it didn't already start by itself and then wait for the two drones to be delivered now the next step is optional but it is very important that if you do this you do this before you unpack the drones and that is switching the channel from channel one that is on by default to some other channel i prefer channel four because this is going to be my bus channel and then the next step is that if we're going to modify the behavior, we're going to go to the library and we're going to load in the bus parameters that we just programmed or rather than the ones uh, requesting the drones. We're now going to tell the uh, bus what we actually want it to store. So let's say, for example, maybe a couple of stacks of metal or a couple of stacks of crystal chunks and so on. For this demonstration, I initially just loaded up all the materials that we're going to need to make in order to get circuit boards, and that includes the circuit boards themselves. Now, at this point, you can unpack the drones, and the reason that we needed to wait with unpacking the drones is that they take a snapshot of a couple of the different settings that are in the building at the moment they're unpacked. I'm expecting this to be fixed in a future patch, but for now, if you, for example, change the channel that the building is on, it doesn't always translate to the drones, and they might get confused about what channel they're actually on. For example, right now, if we look at the drones themselves, you can see that they're actually on channel 4, like the building, uh, rather than, for example, on channel 1. And if they are still on channel 1, they won't be able to transport between the buildings. By the way, you can check if they're in a range of the bus by hovering over your drone. As you can see, the green area highlights the range of the drone and they're well within the range. So you're able to fit in quite a few of these buildings if you would want to. In order to actually get the resources on the bus, we're going to need somewhere to supply them from. And I think the best way to do that is by using basically the same recipe all over again but specifically tailoring this to one specific unit so again i just built these um loaded up the default blueprints and so, stuff like that uh had the drones delivered but the one thing i changed before i actually unpacked these drones is i set the channel to one and four 
Now one is what I usually use as my main channel where uh, all the bots are reacting to, where all the supply and demand is being arranged normally. Um, usually that's where you start out from the get-go at the start of the game anyway. Um, so this is basically connected to the rest of the world as well as the bus, but the bus is only connected to itself because there's nothing on channel 4 except the bus. Now, assuming you did all of this correctly, as soon as you start up the bus behavior, you should now see the drones flying in and delivering these resources. Now, of course, we can't actually find these other resources yet. As you can see, we do have the other things being delivered to our bus. Now, you can just copy paste this everywhere else. Uh, it doesn't actually activate the bus, I believe. Nope. So you'll have to do that manually, but that's okay. It's not that much work and you only have to do it once. As you can see, you can now see everything moving through the bus and we have all our base resources in here. So now we have everything that we need for circuit boards. And this is just an example. Let's actually build some circuit boards. Now, in order to actually make stuff in our bus, or at least alongside our bus, we're going to need a couple of different layouts as well. Uh, one for the smelter, one for the assembler, one for the robotics assembler, basically all the crafting buildings. I recommend using the exact same layout, the exact same type of building as before as well. And all the designs will have one thing in common. There needs to be at least one drone port. Now you can do two drone ports if you want, especially because this medium slot is going to be needed for the assembler and the robotics assembler. Um, so you're going to need to put the drone slot in here uh, in one of the smaller ones. Usually you don't really have much use for the other one in that case, but that's completely up to you. You can do that whatever you want. Just keep in mind that if you have only one drone port, that I recommend only requesting a single drone as well. So this is why my behavior over here that I have preloaded only requests one single item. And of course, for the more complicated things like robotics products, you typically also need something to be small in anyway, so might as well fit it in right over here and then use the other one for drone port. Alternatively, again, you can use two drone ports, but you don't really need to. One is going to be just fine. Now I'm going to start out with the building that actually crafts the stuff I want. In this case, that's the circuit boards. But before we do anything else, again, I'm going to switch the channel to channel four and then unpack the bot so the bot knows it's on channel four as well. Now. You might be wondering, why are we doing everything on channel 4? That is because I want to avoid all these tiny little robots to run through my entire um, mall, probably get stuck in there at some point. I want the drones to do all the work and I only want to actually have the final outputs from our mall. So that's going to be these types of buildings to be actually exported from this bus and all the buildings that are related to it. So this is why we're actually doing anything, everything on a different channel, just to make sure there's no stray items going in or out where we don't want them to. Anyway, as soon as this is put to four, you can actually stop the behavior once again, so that it's not requesting any more bots. They won't be delivered anyway, because again, it's not on channel one where all the other bots are on. And then what we're going to be doing is setting the production. Now we're going to be crafting circuit boards. So let's set that like this. As you can see, the drone is already flying off to get some crystals. Um, but then we're actually going to check out the crafting recipe. In order to make sure this building is going to be fully functional, we need one and a half of these uh, uh, fabricators making plates. We're going to need two of the fabricators making the um, base metal bars. And then we're going to need raw resources that are coming in anyway. So that means that on top of these buildings, we're going to need a few more. Now we already have one fabricator in the setup that I have over here. Um, you can of course just separate this and do something else with this slot. But again, this is very useful. Remember that you do need a drone port, at least one drone port in here for items to be actually delivered. And now all we need to do is build the similar building twice, in this case the one with the fabricators and assign some of the plates being made over here as well as of course over here. I actually forgot that one. There we go. Um, and then have another two making the metal bars. Now you might every now and then get into a situation where you have an additional fabricator left over that you don't actually need for the production process. Just set it to make metal bars. The only thing you can make from metal ore is metal bars anyway, so there's no such thing as having too many metal bars. And because of this algorithm over here, you'll never have an overflow of items in your bus because you can limit the amount that's actually being requested. So any uh, overproduction is going to stay in the building until it's actually needed. Now you can see that the drones are super active. They're already transporting everything. There's not a single robot on the floor and this is working like intended. 
Now, as the production change starts up, you'll see the items start bouncing through the entire bus as well. And the nice thing about this is this is a bi-directional bus. So sometimes in other factory games, you have the issue that you need to really think about where in your bus you actually build certain buildings because it's only going in one direction. But this bus goes every single way. Uh, if I build something all the way over here and I need it actually over here, no problem. At some point, it will start bouncing around and it will get there. Uh, the bi-directional thing does create some random ish uh, things that sometimes an uh, item bounces around in the wrong direction but that's not going to be a problem after just a couple of minutes because there's just going to be more added items being added to the mix as long as you're still producing them and remember that also means that you don't need separate storage the actual bus itself is going to act as your storage because you're going to have several stacks basically one stack of every item at least uh, per item in your bus and on top of that of course there's going to be a stockpile in your actual production facility as well so don't bother with additional stockpiles that you're not going to need now if you're thinking all this fiddling with channels doesn't that take a long time well actually it only takes a long time the first time you add a new thing to your um, mall because the, after that you can easily add more things by just copy pasting so let's for say for example right now um, I want to add reinforced plates to my mall now I already have the um, assembler outline over here so I can just use that recipe I know I'm going to need one fabricator making plates and two uh, fabricators making the um, metal bars so very similar to what we've been doing so far so what I can do is just build those buildings Again, wait for the drone to be delivered and then all you need to do is just find a building that's very similar to what you want to produce. So for example, in this case, uh, the circuit board ones, copy paste the settings and then just open the robot. Now, as you can see, it will be set to channel 4 already. It has most of the things up and running. It's actually starting to produce circuit boards straight away. That's not what we want. We want to have the uh, iron uh, reinforced plates over here. We do actually want metal plates. And in the case of the normal metal smelters, we can actually just copy paste this. And again, don't forget to unpack the robot and you're done. So it doesn't take all that long. It's just the initial setup takes a little bit of work. But after that, it's a matter of copy and pasting. And also in case you're wondering, even with the more complex materials, it doesn't take up all that much space. It's actually fairly compact. This entire row is producing um, a full amount of high density frames uh, non-stop. And of course, there's actually a little bit of overproduction in most of the produ production chains as well. Because for example, you need one and a half fabricator and you're building two. Um, so you're taking that into account, you can here and there maybe scale something down if you do think things are growing too big. But then again, you're playing a factory game, so just produce whatever you want. Now there's a couple more things. So um, for example, you might be wondering why are you building this so far away from the mall, uh, from the bus? Well, the reason for that is, there's actually a couple of reasons for that. First of all, it makes it a lot easier for any robots that need to get through to actually get through. There's a lot of space here. Uh, and this is the distance the drones can carry, so there's no problem with that. Alternatively, if you don't necessarily want this distance to be here and, and this, this easy notes of getting through, what you can do is just replicate this line of buildings uh, twice over and it will still fit in here. You actually have a little bit of room left if you do that because I built these um, five steps out so they're actually on the edge of the range of the bots as you can see only half the building is still in the range so this is but that's enough you only need half the building to be in the range in order for it to actually qualify for delivery so um, this is just leaving as much space as you can and because these buildings are too wide you can build this two more times and you can thereby easily replicate and scale up your production for a certain type of item because you can easily identify what you're building where now, um, for the same reason, I'm also leaving space between different items, just so I have a corridor for my robots to get through if for whatever reason they need to. However, more importantly, you're actually going to run out of space in your bus at some point. For this very simple reason is that there is still limited space over here and there is a lot of different items in the game. If you just check here, you can see what you can put on it. This is like over 20 items, which is not going to fit in here. Now. This holds especially true if you're going to add the um, the blight and virus items in here as well. So what you can actually do is just set up a secondary bus line for that. Or for final products, like for example the um, high density frames over here. You're not going to be using the high density frame in combination with low tier items anyway. So you might as well put that on a separate bus. If you put that bus straight next to this one over here. Stuff. 
Now the second and probably more important reason I actually left some room for myself is that you're going to run out of space on your bus and I want one single factory producing everything we can and in order to do that we need to make sure everything is on the bus. Now um, it's actually very simple to extend this bus just build a secondary line and add different types of resources to that. Everything will be in the range of everything so you're not going to run into an issue uh, with things being disconnected or anything like that. You just get the second line to request different items. Um, speaking of which, considering we now actually added a lot of new items to the mix, uh, we're not requesting them on our current bus. And expanding your bus as you progress through the game is actually really easy. All you need to do is select one of your parts of the bus, edit the behavior, add more slots to this. Something like this over here, don't forget to link everything up. Add the new items to the mix as I've done over here and then just copy paste that to all the other different buildings. Do that a few more times and as you can see it's pretty easy to pretty much replicate your entire production facilities in a single mall and the robots don't actually have to do anything anymore other than bring in the raw resources. Uh, I actually destroyed everything else just to prove my point. I'll uh, have the generator bots clean that up but yeah as you can see it works very well. Uh, it just runs by itself and all the drones are doing the hard lifting. Now you might be wondering okay now I have a lot of resources in production how do I actually get them back? Uh, for example into my my building strategies and stuff like that because they're now on a different channel than every other robot well that's where these uh, things at the end of the bus come in these are exactly identical to the rest of the bus with one small difference these ones are actually linked to channel one as well so the robots as you can see can swarm around here pick things up and then build whatever they need to do now there's actually not going to be that much swarming when we're done because right now they're actually driving up and back uh, back and forth to the actual mall over here but we're actually going to place the mall right next to the bus as well because why would we have the bots arriving around when we have drones to do that job in order to produce everything in our mall we're going to use a slightly adapted version of the bus building we're going to replace the small spot that used to have the fabricator with some small storage because that allows us to stack up some spare parts and we're going to add in a portable transporter in the remaining open slot and with all of this set up it's now really easy to just expand every single building that you have unlocked and every single component that you have unlocked into your mall so over here you can see i have the small storage units i started with the stuff that i actually need in my mall so just to keep things close at hand and there's a couple of things to note the Actual mall buildings are only set to channel 4. That's to avoid all of these dr drones starting or the robots starting to run around bringing materials to this and, and from the mall, etc. Et that gets really messy really fast. So they're only set to channel 4. They're receiving everything only from the drones that are flying around here. And then I have these tiny little platforms. They're actually the base units, the first, very first thing that you unlock in the game, uh, just with a couple of slots available and i'm pushing the items on there of course locked so that we're not getting materials on here but only the end product um with the means of the portable transporter now this thing is actually just set like the, like the the pure default to channel one so if any building anywhere in the world needs some of these small storage units the robots can come and pick it up so the the robots now actually only have two functions they are bringing the raw resources to my bus over here and they are supplying the buildings and components to wherever i'm trying to build something new but the entire production chain as well as the entire mall buildings and i haven't completed it over here yet but that's the idea uh, i'm slowly removing everything that i have over here don't mind the mess i need to clean it up um but yeah, everything is being built in here, completely automated, no drones involved, no, no nothing getting stuck, no complicated programming or anything like that. Just drones bringing in resources and robots bringing it wherever else the end product needs to go. And look at the poor little things, they're so bored, they have nothing to do anymore. But I do think this is by far the best way to do, well, like kind of optimize your entire base. There's nothing wrong with all these, these these bots zooming around, but you do need to make sure that you, you point them to the right directions and that can get a little messy. These drones don't need any steering after you put them down. They take care of everything. So I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions for me, put them in the comments. I try to answer as many as I can. Um, I've noticed a couple of other content creators making similar things like this as well. 
not surprising concerning there's only so many ways you can actually build a base. Um, but I hope you like my version. So if you do, um, let me know in the comments and I hope to catch you in the next one.